are Charlie and Ray Eames. So famous. Is it their contribution to furniture design with the Eames molded plastic chair used extensively in educational institutions worldwide? Or their designs for World War II medical equipment helping tens of thousands injured Allied soldiers? Or else their work for the United States Information Agency to spread American propaganda across Russian borders and Moscow during the heights of the Cold War? Or finally, was it their love affair together that sparked such a creative contribution to art, film, photography and architecture that cemented their names in history? Charles Eames was born in 1907 in St. Louis, Missouri and went on to study architecture at Washington University in St. Louis, but left after only two years of study in 1927. He departed the university supposedly due to disagreements with the faculty over his interest in modernist architecture, which they did not support. It is likely that his early life was influenced by the social changes and challenges of the time, such as the economic impacts of World War I from 1914 to 1918. The radically changing world might have influenced Charles towards his more modernist viewpoints compared to his senior lecturers. Ray Kaiser, later to be Ray Eames, was born in 1912 in Sacramento, California and studied art at Bennett Women's College and the Art Academy in Cranbrook, Michigan. It was here that the two met while Charles was a teacher and Ray a student. Despite not finishing his architectural education, Charles gained credibility through practical experience working in the architectural firm True Blood and Graf. This led him to teaching design and architecture and eventually serving as the head of the industrial design department when he met art student Ray Kaiser in 1940. Before meeting Ray, Charles was married to Catherine Eames at the age of 23. They had one child, a daughter named Lucia Eames, born in 1933. Charles and Catherine Eames divorced in 1941, shortly before Charles married Ray the same year. After the divorce, Charles maintained a relationship with his daughter Lucia, although the specifics of their relationship were less publicized compared to his works with Ray. Lucia she grew up to be involved in the arts and design in her own right. Following their marriage, Charles and Ray Eames collaborated on a wide range of influential design projects including furniture, architecture and multimedia exhibits. Their union and collaboration became one of the most renowned in design history. As the two melded into their partnerships, it became clear that the line between their work and their personal lives were forever blurred. Many of their quotes are hard to distinguish between the two. Eames Demetrius, their grandson, is quoted in saying, The Eameses had a partnership of creativity and joy. Their love was reflected in their work and in the way they approached life. The lovers' peace was not easy, however, as elsewhere in the world, World War II had begun in 1939. America officially joined the war effort in December of 1941 after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor. During the World War II, Charles and Ray Eames made significant contributions utilizing their design and engineering skills. The Eameses were commissioned by the US Navy to design medical splints, airplane fuselages, stabilizer tails, and pilot seats. Their work involved experimenting with molded plywood, a material they had been developing for furniture design. The molded plywood splints were superior to traditional metal splints due to their lightweight, ergonomic design and durability, which enhanced comfort and practicality for patients and medical personnel. Their innovative use of molded plywood also made the splints more cost effective and easier to produce in wartime conditions. The Eames's innovative use of molded plywood was later utilized in the renowned furniture creations. The Eames molded plywood chair, 1946, was hailed by Times Magazine as the best design of the 20th century. This chair utilized innovative techniques to mold plywood into comfortable and ergonomic shapes. One of their most recognizable and sought after furniture designs came in the form of the Eames lounge chair and ottoman. 1956. It combined luxury and comfort with modern aesthetics, but was nowhere near as widely used as their stacking chair. The Eameses created the stacking and ganging side chair in response to demands for a lightweight stacking chair that could be set up quickly for seating large groups and that at the same time be stored easily. The chairs can be ganged in straight or curved rows. When stacked, the side hooks support and separate seats to avoid abrasion. It was in 1959 the Eameses presented their glimpse of the USA at the American National Exhibition in Moscow. This was an attempt to diffuse tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. The exhibition consisted of seven screens depicting images of American life, culture and technology. The idea of there being seven screens was to show the abundance of America and their skyscrapers, high quality road networks and social life and that they weren't one-off statements, but rather the norm. The seven screens immediately conveys the idea that there are several real examples across America, or at the very least, there are seven. The presentation was notable for its innovative use of visual technology and design, reflecting the Eames' expertise in creating engaging and educational experiences. This was one of the many exhibition fairs the couple worked on together, including the World Fair Expos, 58 in Belgium, 67 in Canada, and 70 in Japan. 
It was here they presented their work, Mathematica, A World of Numbers and Beyond, which later influenced their short film, Powers of Ten, in 1977, where they explore from atoms to the greater universe in a passing scale of ten. Their groundbreaking work at various international exhibitions seamlessly transitioned into their architectural projects, reflecting their innovative approach to design and space. Located in Pacific Palisades, California, the Eames family home and studio was better known as Case Study House Number no. 8 because it was part of the Case Study House program sponsored by Arts and Architecture magazine after World War II. The house would later become a member of the National Historic Landmarks in 2006. The Eames' house was designed as part of this broader effort to experiment with and demonstrate new ideas in housing and design. It reflected the program's goals of exploring modular construction, industrial materials and integration with the environment. Case Study House No. 8 is renowned for its pioneering integration of industrial materials and modernist design principles, featuring a steel frame, glass walls, and an open floor plan that creates a seamless connection between indoor and outdoor spaces. The house services as both a functional living space and a design laboratory, embodying the Eames' vision of modern, flexible and harmonious architecture. Charles Eames died from lung cancer on August 21st, 1978. His death marked the end of a significant chapter in not only Ray's life, but the world of design in general. Ray continued to work out of the Eames' office for a few years after Charles' passing. However, she closed the active office and focused on securing the Eames' office legacy for future generations to draw inspiration. Ray donated 1.5 million two-dimensional objects, including 750,000 prints and photographs, to the Library of Congress. She also wrote an encyclopedic volume of the Eames' offices, varied projects, lectures, and continued to welcome visitors and student groups graciously into the Eames' home. On the 10th anniversary of Charles' passing, to the day Ray left as well. The legacy of Charles and Ray Eames in architecture is characterized by their pioneering spirit and innovative approach to design. Their contributions to the Case Study House program demonstrate new possibilities for residential architecture in a post-war era, emphasizing affordability, efficiency, and modern aesthetics. While their portfolio of built structures may not be extensive, their influence in architectural thought practices and modern design philosophy cannot be understated. Through their collaboration, they were able to create iconic, effective multimedia designs that exemplify and expand upon the perceived roles of an architect. So now you know.